Hey, it's Tom here and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that uh, I often have some books sitting behind me uh, in these videos. And uh, I've read quite a number of investing books at this point. Uh, some of them have been extremely helpful and have really shaped the way that I invest in the stock market or uh, invest in really anything today. And others have been, frankly, a complete waste of time. I didn't really enjoy them and I didn't really get a lot out of them. So um, I often get asked what my basically top book recommendations are of all the ones that I've got through at this point. Uh, and that is what this video is going to be all about. This is going to be my top four investing books that I basically think pretty much every investor should have on their bookshelf. These are the ones that by far and away have been the most influential in terms of shaping an investment philosophy for me personally. Uh, and I really hope that you guys can get something out of these books as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into it and I hope you enjoy. Now the place I'm going to start here is perhaps a little bit unconventional if you've watched any of these uh, you know, favorite investing books in the past. Uh, this one's perhaps not on a lot of people's lists, although um, I think this is an absolutely fantastic place to start if you're just getting into stock market investing. And uh, this is basically Invested by Phil and Danielle Town. Now Phil Town, uh, some of you may have come across before actually here on YouTube, or maybe you've seen his podcast or uh, read some of his other books. He does actually have three, and this is the third one uh, in the series, and he he wrote this one with his daughter Danielle, in fact. Um, I've read all three of Phil Town's books, and um, basically this one, Invested, is kind of a summary of his first two, plus a little bit added on top, and a little bit of the perspective from uh, Danielle being sort of taught how to invest by, by her father Phil. So if you wanted to just read any of those three Phil Town books, I think Invested is the way to go. Uh, and this really starts right from the beginning. Basically Danielle Town's story is she's the daughter of Phil Town, uh, you know, this relatively well-known investor, and has kind of gone all the way through um, her early adult life, studied to be a lawyer, and then basically ended up practicing law. And throughout that entire period of time, Phil Town had been, you know, trying to teach Danielle all about the power of common compounding and investing uh, and Danielle just really hadn't particularly cared uh, up until the time they started their podcast. So this basically goes through um, Danielle's entire journey of learning investing and covers a lot of the core principles that I really still use today. Now I've kind of moved on a little bit from some of the valuation techniques that Phil and Danielle talk about in this book um, but in terms of trying to get your head around a business and understand a business um, and also some of the kind of psychological side of investing in the stock market and dealing with volatility this is a really really good place to start it goes through Phil Town's classic sort of 4M checklist of meaning moat management and margin of safety and those are still basically the core um, sections of my analysis that I go through when I invest in a particular company or analyze any given company today so that's the first one uh, invested from Phil and Danielle Town um, it's about 300 pages but it's really um, quite an enjoyable read particularly if you've listened to Phil and Danielle's podcast before it is actually pretty entertaining uh, given Danielle's perspective in this book and uh, it's really enjoyable and will we'll build a lot of those core kind of habits that you need as an investor. Now the second book I've got here is The Dundo Investor by Monish Pabride. Now uh, many of you have probably heard me talk about this book a number of times if you've been following the channel for, for any length of time. Um, this is a book I've actually read twice now. And it is very good. There's basically two types of businesses that I personally will invest in today. Uh, one is like what I would describe as a 50 cent dollar, um, which is exactly what this book covers. And the other type of business is a more high quality growing business that you can hold and have compound over a period of time, which is largely covered by another book that I will talk about shortly. But in terms of getting started with kind of really in-depth value investing, this is a fantastic place to go. So Monish Pabrai has a pretty phenomenal investment track record uh, at the time of writing this book he'd compounded in like the high 20 percent per year range and he actually gives several examples of investments that he's made um, leading up to the writing of this book and some of the things that he was thinking about and I still use a lot of those core kind of philosophies in my own investing today um, so things like the concept of risk and uncertainty being quite different things uh, and things that people often get confused uh, that's a core principle that you'll learn from this book you'll also learn uh, the fact that the classic entrepreneur really is not a risk taker like the average person might think an entrepreneur really is and it really shows that good investing does not have to be complicated it goes through uh, investing in established industries and simple to understand businesses in situations where the market has just got risk and uncertainty completely confused and uh, really demonstrates a lot of the potential opportunities that you will find as you kind of uh, weed through different businesses that are 
publicly traded in the stock market. So cannot recommend the Dundo Investor by Monus Probray enough. Uh, this one's about 180 pages long, roughly. Um, rather large font size as well by Mr. Monus Probray. So um, it'll be a pretty quick read for uh, any of the slower readers out there, much like myself. Um, I'm not the quickest reader in the world, but powered through this one pretty quickly. Uh, and I've done it a couple times now because I enjoyed it so much. So uh, that's number two, the Dundo Investor by Monus Probray. Okay, so the third book I have here is uh, The Intelligent Investor by Ben Graham. Now, uh, if you're going to make a top book recommendations, particularly as a value investor, uh, it would be blasphemy not to include this one. Now, uh, this is a book that uh, Ben Graham, uh, Warren Buffett's teacher, the dean of value investing, is most famous for writing. He's written a couple of books, uh, including, including Security Analysis, which is a big behemoth textbook style uh, book on investments. But The Intelligent Investor is the slightly slightly more condensed, slightly simpler version of many of the same concepts. And uh, it is still the best book ever written on investing in the words of Warren Buffett. Now, um, although this book is quite old at this point, it was actually written in 1949. Uh, again, several of the core principles of investing are no different from 1949 than they are to today. Of course, today we might be working with quite different types of companies, but really the core philosophies in this book still hold strong today. And Warren Buffett himself highlights really two chapters in this particular book that uh, will be the ones that are most important for you to learn. And again, these are still things that I apply to my own investments today. And uh, that is chapter 8 and chapter 20, chapter 20 being the actual final chapter of this book. Now, uh, chapter 8 and chapter 20 basically cover two core concepts. Chapter 8 covers uh, a concept of Mr. Market and chapter 20 covers this concept of margin of safety and both of those two principles particularly margin of safety are really riddled throughout all of the investment books that i'm that i'm talking about in this video but uh, this is really the first place that the concept of margin of safety and the concept of mr market really came from and Mr. Market, basically, as Ben Graham describes it, is your business partner when it comes to investments. He will turn up at your house every day and allow you to buy and sell uh, any stock, any security, uh, in as much volume as you really desire. And um, the only catch, really, is that Mr. Market names the price. Now, um, the good thing from our perspective, but perhaps the poor thing for Mr. Market, is uh, Mr. Market happens to be a manic depressive drunk, and uh, he tends to get very uh, optimistic and very greedy in terms of the prices that he has on any given day, and he can also get extremely depressed. And our job as an investor is to be rational about the true value of those underlying securities, of those underlying businesses businesses or bonds or whatever you might be investing in and really only utilize Mr. Market when he gives us unreasonable prices, whether that be buying something from him at a really, really cheap price relative to its intrinsic value or whether that be selling something to Mr. Market at a really egregious price relative to its intrinsic value. So understanding that Mr. Market is there to serve us rather than to instruct us and to always buy with the margin of safety are two of the concepts that will never die from this particular book. Uh, and really you can't call yourself a true investor unless you've got this one on your bookshelf and you've powered through it. So um, that is number three. It is a bit of a grind. Uh, as intelligent as Ben Graham was as an investor, he is not the easiest writer in the world to kind of read through. So this book's about 500 pages or so, and uh, frankly, it is pretty dry, but <laughs> it is really a book that you must have on your bookshelf as a value investor, even in 2021. Okay, now the fourth and final book that I want to recommend that has really shaped my investment philosophy today uh, is this one, A Hundred Baggers by Christopher Meyer. Now this one was actually recommended to me originally by a subscriber to the channel and it is really one of my favorite investing books that I've ever read. Now, A uh, Hundred Bagger, for those that, that aren't familiar, is basically a stock that goes up 100 to 1, goes up 100 times. So for every dollar you put in, you end up with $100 at the end. These are the absolute holy grail of investing. And as much as it sounds like something that might be sort of too good to be true, uh, these things do exist. And, and this, in fact, is a case study of 365 of them that uh, turned up from 1962 through to 2014. And it turns out that uh, there's really a lot of common characteristics between uh, every single hundred bagger that exists. And um, basically the core ingredients that you need to find a stock that returns, you know, 100 to 1 in the stock market is you really 
need three ingredients and uh, although you can get away with having not quite all three of these in some cases, uh, ideally you'll have all three of these working together in order to give you the best chance at a 100 bagger. And basically uh, the first two is earnings growth. Now it's no secret that um, a stock doesn't just go up 100x for absolutely no reason. Typically the business that underlies that stock is growing at a very rapid rate as well. So first thing you need is growth. Uh, the second thing that ideally you want to have also working on your side is multiple expansion. So if you can buy a business at a PE of 10, for example, and over the period of time that you hold that stock, it goes to a PE of 20, uh, you've gotten a double out of that. And it means that you need a little bit less earnings growth in order to get your 100x return. So um, that's the second thing. Alongside growth, you also ideally want multiple expansion. And the third thing that you need uh, simply is time. Now, uh, although the time frames with each of these 300 plus uh, 100 baggers does vary somewhat the average holding period for one of these stocks to go up 100x was approaching 20 years so uh, this is really not a strategy that will get you rich overnight but it will certainly get you rich over a long period of time if you can track down one of these 100 baggers and really today there are only kind of two types of stocks that I invest in. There are the uh, 50 cent dollars which Monish Pabrai talks about in the Dando Investor and there are the potential 10 or even 100 baggers that can compound over a long period of time. And this book was hugely influential in terms of how I analyze different businesses and analyze different investments and try and really understand the potential of those companies to grow over an extended holding period. Because really you do not not need very many of these types of investments in your entire investment lifetime. If you can find one or two of these and put a significant amount of your net worth into these types of businesses and hold those for a long period of time and have them work out really, really well, uh, you can do phenomenally well as an investor, even if the rest of your portfolio does not do that spectacularly. So that's my fourth and final must read book for all investors is 100 Baggers by Chris Meyer. Again, this is a relatively easy and short read. It's only about 190 pages and uh, it's pretty entertaining. Unlike Ben Graham, Chris Meyer is, uh, has a writing style that I at least found relatively easy to kind of power through. So uh, that's the fourth and final book recommendation and I hope you enjoy that one as well. So there you have it. Those are my top four must read books for all investors. I think anyone who is serious about investing should have all four of those on their bookshelves. Now, uh, if you think I've missed any and you have uh, a different top four to what I have, definitely drop those down in the comments below. Um, I'd love to check out any new investment books that you think I'd learn something from. So would really appreciate you sharing that. Uh, but that's it from me today. If you did enjoy the video, please hit like and hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.